Okay, we're back with the third and final part of the video solutions to practice test 3A from College Algebra for this semester. So we're on question, uh, we worked the first uh, 1 through 10 on the first video, 11 through 20 on the next, and we'll do 21 to the end here on this one here. So we're looking at another power function, f of x is x to the square root of 19. Notice the square root of 19 is irrational. That means it's going to be in first quadrant only. The other thing to know is the square root of 19 is larger than 1, so it goes through 0, 0, and 1, 1, and continues up in a con concave up increasing manner. So the domain is from 0 to infinity, including 0. The range is also from 0 on up to infinity. And uh, let's see what else. The graph is in quadrant 1 only. It doesn't have any symmetry. So no symmetry. In the first quadrant, it's increasing concave up. And it is increases without bound on the right side. And it's one continuous piece. 22. It's y equals x to the 0. That's a very special one. x to the 0 is... Uh, anything to the zero power is one, almost. The exception is zero to the zero is undefined. So it looks like just a horizontal line at y equals one, but with a hole in the graph at zero, one. So uh, the domain is everything except for zero, so that would be negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. The range is just the, the number one, and that's it, the set containing one. And the graph is in quadrants 1 and 2, and it has y-axis symmetry. Uh, of course, that's even uh, 0 over 1, so it's even over odd. 0 is an even number. The first quadrant, the graph is constant, the same, and it is in the second quadrant as well. And it's straight, so it's linear. And uh, each of these answers is actually correct. It neither increases nor decreases, so A, B, C, or D a, B, C, and D are all incorrect, so each of the other answers is incorrect. It's actually constant. Um, it stays the same value all the way across, except for where it's undefined. And But it's actually two pieces separated by a hole in the graph. So there's a discontinuity there. Um, okay, so we have a power function, y equals x to the n, the one point that's on the graph, no matter what, no exceptions, is 1, 1. 1 to any power is 1, no exceptions. So it all, they all go through the point 1, 1. If the graph contains the point 0, 0, then n must be a positive number. So n is a positive number, it goes through uh, the point 0, 0 and the point 1, 1. And then it's either going to, if it's a positive number, it's either going to increase, maybe concave down, maybe straight, maybe concave up, but it is going to increase going through 0, 0, 1, 1. But when the power is 0, then uh, it's undefined at 0. You have a hole in the graph. And if the power is negative, it doesn't, at least in the first quadrant, may or may not have more, but it doesn't, it, it's undefined at 0 as well. So it doesn't go through 0, 0 in those cases. It doesn't go through 0 anything. So 0 to any power is 0 as long as that power is positive. But if that power is negative or 0, it's undefined. 0 to 0 is undefined. 0 to negative is undefined. If the graph, if the graph contains the point, uh, it's going to contain 1, 1. If it also contains negative 1, negative 1, then it's in quadrants 1 and 3, and it's going to have origin symmetry. And when that happens, when the power is a odd over odd, it's some power that can be written in a fraction, odd over odd. If it contains negative 1, positive 1, Now, let me do a little better graph than that. It's going to contain 1, 1 no matter what, but if it contains also negative 1, positive 1, it's in quadrants 1 and 2, it will have y-axis symmetry, 
and that power will be even over odd. Okay, so we have y equals x to the 38 over 5. First of all, let's look at the size of it. 38 over 5 is larger than 1, so that means in the first quadrant, you're going to go through 0, 0, and 1, 1, and it's going to increase in a concave up manner like that. Now we have, notice that the power is even over odd, so let's see what happens when we plug in a negative. A negative to the 38th power, negative any even power, is going to be positive. Let's try negative 1. Okay, what happens when you put in negative 1? Okay, when you raise to the 38th power, or any even power, you get positive 1, and you take a fifth root or any odd root, you're still positive 1. So it's going to contain that point, so that means you have second quadrant, and what's in the second quadrant should be a mirror image of, the, of what's over here in the first quadrant. I did it to scale. And so in this case, the domain is everything, all reals, negative infinity to infinity. The range is from 0 up, including 0, 0 to infinity. The quadrant is 1 and 2. It has y-axis symmetry. In the first quadrant, it's increasing concave up. And on the extreme right, it's increasing without bound. And the graph is one continuous piece. Okay, next one, y equals x to the negative 28 over 17. The power is uh, negative 28 over 17. It's negative, so it's less than zero. Anytime you have a negative power, power function, now this is not transformed, but it'll still go through 1, 1, but it goes like this in the first quadrant. It's decreasing concave up and it is has asymptotes. Now here we have even over odd, so notice if you put in a negative to an even power, you get positive, then take a root, you get positive, and then, but it'll be, uh, so it'll include this point here, and so we get quadrants one and two, and we have some y-axis symmetry going on here. So the domain is all reals except for zero, which we would write in interval notation as negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, not including the uh, zero. The range is uh, from zero up, but doesn't actually include zero. This goes all the way down to, but not touching the uh, x-axis, which is your asymptote. It's in quadrant one and two. It has y-axis symmetry. In the first quadrant, it's decreasing concave up. On the extreme right on the graph, it decreases, but leveling off to a horizontal asymptote, so C. And it's actually two pieces, and it's separated by a vertical asymptote. So you do need to be able to do these without a calculator. Okay, y equals x to the 21 20 seconds. Okay, 21 over 22 is a fraction between 0 and 1. Okay, being a positive power, it is going to go through 0, 0, and 1, 1. But being less than 1, it's going to be increasing but concave down. It's close to 1, so it'll be almost straight here, but not really. It's, it's actually concave down a little bit. Now, it's odd over even. So if I put in a negative to an odd power, that's a negative. Then take an even root, it's not real. So for our purposes, it doesn't exist. So it's quadrant one only. So that's the whole graph. So the domain is from zero to infinity, including zero. The range is also from zero to infinity, including zero. Graph is in quadrant one only. None of those symmetries. It's increasing concave down in the first quadrant, which is all there is. And it does increase without bound, so it doesn't level off to an asymptote. It goes up forever. And it is one connected continuous piece. The next one is f of x or y equals x to the 29 over negative 30. Well, notice that's a negative power. Any time you have a negative power, we know that first quadrant looks basically like this, where you have asymptotes vertical and horizontal asymptotes there. Somewhere in here is the point one one. Okay, so 
So now notice that we have odd over even. When you get that even denominator, you don't have a uh, you don't have a uh, a um, second quadrant. It says first quadrant only. Domain is zero to infinity, not including zero. Same for the range. First quadrant only. No symmetry. Decreasing concave up uh, decreases. Uh, to a horizontal asymptote, one continuous piece. Okay, another one of the same kind. F of x equals x to the 5 ninths. This time it's a positive power, so in the first quadrant it will include 0, 0, and 1, 1, and it's increasing, but 5 ninths is between 0 and 1, so it's going to be increasing, but in a concave down manner. Notice that we have odd over odd, so if I put in a negative to an odd power is negative, then take an odd root is negative, and so it's going to be down here, and then you're going to get a rotated image down in quadrant 3 from what you had up in quadrant 1. So that's going to be uh, quadrants 1 and 3 in origin symmetry. This one increases the entire way with a point of inflection at the origin. The domain is all reals, negative infinity to infinity, same for the range. Quadrants 1 and 3 has origin symmetry. The first quadrant it's increasing, in fact this one's increasing everywhere. It's concave down in the first quadrant, up in the third. And on the extreme right it increases with without bound and it is one continuous piece. Uh, f of x equals x to the 11 thirds. Notice the 11 thirds is bigger than 1, so we know in the first quadrant it goes through 0, 0, and 1, 1 there in an increasing concave up way. Odd over odd, two odds, that's going to give you quadrant 1 and 3. Because if we put in a negative number to the 11th power, that's say negative 1 to the 11th is negative 11, cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, and so we get a rotated image here down in the third quadrant. So you get quadrants 1 and 3, we have origin symmetry, we have an inflection point here. So domain is all reals, range is all reals. Uh, quadrants 1 and 3, origin symmetry, increasing concave up in the first quadrant, increasing without bound on the far right, and it's one continuous piece. Okay, square root of 9x squared, that's 3 square x squared, and then square root. The divide these out, the square and the square root cancel, 3x, but since it's an even power, we need absolute value. So it's absolute value of 3x, which we can take the 3 out of the absolute value and then leave, but we can't take the absolute value off the x, so we're going to want that as 3 absolute value of x. Notice if you just said 3x, that would be right for the positive x's, but not for the negative ones. We need that absolute value, 3 absolute value of x. Okay, let's see if we can just, see if we can finish this. Uh, 31. Square root of 28. Okay, you want to make this into prime numbers. Looks like I can get a 4 out, 4 times 6. No, 4 times 7. 4 times 7, so that's 2 squared times 7. Yeah. So 2 squared times 7. This cancels, leaves absolute value of 2, but absolute value of 2 is 2, so this is 2 squared is 7. So this power was the same as the root, so they cancel out. That power is less than the root, so there's no nothing to do with that. So 2 squared root is 7. Uh, 180, x to the 6th, y to the 15th. And we do a square root. Again, we want to take the 180, break that down. 18 times 10. 10 is 2 times 5. 18 is uh, 3 times 6, for example, or 2 times 9. That's 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. If we collect that together, that's 2 square, 3 square, and 5. Once we get in, into prime number bases, then we can use exactly the same technique on the x and y base as we do to the 2 or 3 or 5. So you take the power, let me start with the, I'll do this backwards, we'll start with the y. We take the power of 15 and we divide by the root of 2. We get 7 remainder 1. 
So 7 is the power on the outside. Let me leave myself a little more room here on the outside. So the 7 is the power on the Y on the outside, and the power 1 remains inside. Same, we do 6 divided by 2, we get 3, remainder 0. So 3 is the power on the X on the outside, no X is on the inside. 1 divided by uh, 2 is 0, remainder 1, so that 5 remains inside. 2 divided by, in, in both the 3 and the, and the uh, 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, remainder 0, so there are no 2's and 3's inside, but we get a 2 and a 3 outside. Being an even power, that needs an absolute value. So this is 6 x cubed y to the 7th. This is the square root of 5y. Now, if we read the directions a little bit more, it tells us that everything's a positive number. So since everything's a positive number, we can finally go down here and drop off the absolute value and get 6 x cubed y to the 7th and the square root of 5y. But uh, the only way we could get rid of those absolute values is by knowing that um, everything was positive. So x and y are both positive. Of course, we take it off of the 6 no matter what. Absolute value 6 is 6. Okay, moving on. Uh, square root of 35 times the square root of 10. 35 is uh, 5 times 7. Well, actually this... Yeah, let's leave it. 5 times 7, and 10 is 2 times 5. So this is 2 times 5 squared times 7 under the square root, and the square cancels this square, square and square root cancel on the 5, but the 2 and the 7 remain under. So it's 5 square root of 14. Uh, technically, you need absolute value here, but absolute value of 5 is just 5. That's what we have here. Um, so we're up to number 34. Okay, the cube root of 6x squared y, the cube root of 144x. Okay, uh, 6 is 2 times 3. 144, 144 is 12 times 12. So, and a 12 is a 2 squared times a 3. So we get a total of 2 to the 4th and a 3 square. Now since these are both cube roots and we multiply them, it's cube root and we multiply everything underneath. So this is 2 to the 5th, uh, 3 to the 3rd, x to the 3rd, y. Now we divide out the power by the root. And so here we get 1 remainder 2. So 1 is the power on the outside and the remainder power remains underneath. 3 divided by 3 is 1, no remainder. So that takes care of the powers for the x and the 3. And 1 is less than 3, so nothing on the outside that remains. Do not put absolute value this time because it's a odd root. Don't leave it 2 times 3, make that 6. And make this 4 for 2 squared. That's what they have, that's good. Okay, I'm going to truck right along here. 8 square root of 98 minus the square root of 162 plus 2 square root of 18. Okay, I need to break these down into prime numbers. Let's see, 98, uh, looks like I can get a 2 out of there. 2 times 49, 49 is 7 square. So this is 2 times 7 square. How about 162? This is 2 times 81. 81 is uh, 9 times 9, each of which is a 3 square. So we get uh, 2 times 3 to the 4th. 18 is uh, 2 times 9, so that's 2 times 3 square. Okay, be sure you copy everything correctly down here. Okay. Now let's see what we can do. Um, the square root cancels the, uh, well, it, well, it leaves the 2 in there, but the power and the root are going to cancel here. It leaves a 7 out front, and that's multiplication. Okay, this is going to give us a 3 square out front. leaves the 2 underneath. 
This is going to bring a 3 out front. It leaves the 2 underneath. So 7 times 8 is 56. So this is 56 square root of 2. 3 square is 9. This is 9 square root of 2. And this is 6 square root of 2. Okay, they all have a square root of 2, so we can factor that out, and we just do 56 minus 9 plus 6. Uh, let's see, what is that? That is uh, 53, I believe. Yeah, so that's 53 times the square root of 2. And that's what they have. That's good. Okay, moving right along. Square root of 5 minus the square root of 7, and then square. Do FOIL. Square root of 5 minus the square root of 7 times square root of 5 minus square root of 7. Let's do F first. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 5. I'll do L next. Positive times positive. A negative times negative is a positive. Square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7. Uh, we'll do the inner one. That's minus the square root of 35. And this one is my, also minus the square root of 35. So this is minus 2 square root of 35's, and this is 12. That's what they've got. Good news. Cube root of 40 over cube root of 9. Again, prime numbers. 40 is 4 times 10. That's a 2 square times a 2 times a 5. So all together, 2 to the 3rd times 5. 8 times 5. And the bottom is a cube root of 3 squared. What I need to do is I need to rationalize the denominator. I need to multiply. i got to think ahead. So a cube root, I'm going to multiply by a cube root. So then I multiply what's underneath, and I want this power to be a multiple of 3. It's not. It's only 2. So I got to, by the time I get down here to this step at the end, I don't want there to be any radicals in the denominator. So I need this to bump it up to 3 for the power, which means I need to multiply by 3 to the first power, which I can do the same at the top. So now I have the cube root of 2 cubed times 3 times 5 on the top, and a cube root of 3 cubed in the bottom. So the bottom just becomes 3. The cube root and the 2, the two cubed part, that cancels out, and this pulls the 2 out front, and I get a cube root of 3 times 5, and so 3 times 5 is 15. So 2 cube root of 15 over 3. And that's how they'd like you to write the answer. Okay, next, 4 over 4 minus the square root of 5. Okay, so the technique that I used on the last problem works any time you have the denominator is all one term, no adding or subtracting. But when I have a plus or minus here, I have to use a different technique altogether. The technique is the fact that a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. The o and the i of the foil, uh, one is a b and the other one's minus a b, so it cancels out. So you're only left with the f and the l from foil. So what I do is I take this and I multiply top and bottom by what we call the conjugate. It's the other half of the sum of difference pattern. Since this one's a subtract, this one over here will be plus. Now this fraction right here has to equal 1, so I need to multiply the top by the same, exact same thing that I multiplied the bottom by. Now we do the sum of difference pattern. I get 4 squared minus square root of 5 squared, which is 16 minus 5, which is 11. So notice I've gotten rid of the square root in the denominator. And the top, um, for now I'm going to leave it like it is, factored out. Um, we could possibly leave it like that. It looks like they're wanting you to go ahead and distribute in the top, which would be 16 plus 4 square root of 5, but they want to leave it with one denominator like that. So it looks like that's the form they're looking for. Unfortunately, sometimes these, um, these problems, um, you know, only take one version, so it's likely that it won't take that version right there, which is probably as, as legit of a version as the one that we have at the bottom in some ways, but it's looking for this kind of form. So this is where it, pra it pays to have done some homework problems uh, and practice this thing because as you see one of these on the test, 
I may very well give you the same one. It'll have different numbers in place of the two fours and the five, but um, it will um, want this kind of a format. So kind of remember what format that we had on the practice test. That way you won't miss it on the exam. Okay, a to the three sevenths is a to the third and then the seventh root. So the power is the power in here and the denominator power is the root here, degree of the radical. Okay, square root of negative 19. Well, it's the square root of 19, 19 is prime, so that doesn't, doesn't cancel, doesn't um, simplify, but a negative, a square root of a negative is i, so it's square root of 19 times i. Notice the i is outside the radical. Just a few more. We'll finish up. Okay. Negative 3 plus 3i plus 9 plus 8i. I can just get rid of these parentheses. And I can kind of combine like terms. Negative 3 plus 9 is 6. 3i plus 8i is 11i. So you just treat the i just like you would an x. Um, except remember that i squared is negative 1 if that comes up, which it hasn't yet. It probably will in the next one, though. Let's see. 4 plus 7i times 8 minus 2i. So just do FOIL. 4 times 8, that's 32. I'm going to do the L next. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14, and then you got i squared. Come back to that in a minute. Uh, the outer, negative 8i, and the inner, 56i. Now these will combine like terms. That's 48i. Now, i squared is negative 1, so that makes this plus 14. 33 plus 14 combines to give you 47. Uh-oh, looks like I'm off. Oh, this is 32. 46. There we go. 46 plus 48i. Four plus seven i. So that last one was multiplying two complex numbers. What about dividing? Well, we're going to again use the conjugate, which is to get basically get the bottom to be a sum of difference pattern. We have the difference. We need the sum. Seven plus i. You can only multiply the bottom by that if you multiply the top by the same thing. So that this part is like multiplying by one. In the bottom, we get a difference of two squares, 7 squared minus i squared. i squared is negative 1, which makes this 49. 7 squared is 49. i squared is negative 1, so that makes this plus 1, which will give me 50 for the denominator. Now we do FOIL in the top. 7 times 8 is 28. I'm going to do the, this one next. That's 7 i squared. Then I've got 49i for the inner product. And the outer product, I've got 4i. Combine like terms here, that's 53i. Okay, and then this i squared becomes negative 1, so this is 28 minus 7, which is 21 plus 53i. Now, you want an a plus b i form, so we're going to distribute 50. So you've got 21 over 50 plus 53 over 50. I. If these fractions reduce, then reduce them. The only factors that 50 have is a 2. The prime number factors are 2 and 5. Um, and that's it. So 2 times 5 square. And we see the top, there's no 2s and 5s in there, so that, that's not going to reduce any. So there's your uh, final answer, which is what they have here. And finally, I think this is finally, yeah, this is the last one i to a power. i to the 0 is 1. i to the first is i. i squared by definition is negative 1. i cubed is i times i squared, so it's minus i. And then when you get i to the fourth, you're back to, back to 1 again. So you only get these four possibilities. So it turns out, if you just divide the power by 4, and then look at the remainder, 
the only thing that rema that matters is the remainder power. And then it's this the remainders are 0, 1, 2, or 3, so it's going to be one of these. In this case, it's minus i. Even if this had been some some really huge power like i to the like that the only part that matters is the last two digits because this is so many hundreds which four goes into that hundreds evenly so when you divide this whole number by four you get the same remainder if you just divide the last two digits by 4. So this is still going to be i cubed or minus i. So it boils down, so it's real easy really to do i to a power. Just take whatever is the last two digits on the power, divide by 4, whatever the remainder it is, that's going to be i to that power. Your only possibilities for remainders are 0, 1, 2, or 3, and so you're going to get one of these four numbers, 1, negative 1, i, negative 1, or negative i. All right, I believe that wraps us up for this practice test, part A, and then come back and uh, check the part B, which is to be done using a calculator. Everything on this part A should have been able to be done without a calculator.